Hello, dear friends. Before getting started with our today's question, I would first like to thank a non-colleague who pointed out a little mistake I made in one of our previous episodes. So thank you guys for watching our videos carefully and leaving comments. Your feedback helps us reach perfection. And now back to our team. Today we have a question from Mohammed, who has trouble finding the vertex of the following problem. Obviously, to have Mohammed's question answered, we should uh, consider the equation of the parabola closely, in detail. And since we're about to do it anyway, I will also tell about some other features of the parabolas. In general, parabolas are described by the following equation. y equals to a times squared x plus b times x plus c. Parabola is a quadratic function, and therefore the highest exponent of the x variable we can meet in the equation of the parabola is 2. And a, b and c are constants which can be of any value. They define the shape of the parabola. Let's find out how exactly the shape of the parabola de uh, depends on these coefficients. Let's see. First, there's a. A coefficient standing next to the squared x. This parameter uh, defines whether the branches of the parabola are opened up or down. So if a is a positive number, the branches of the, of the parabola open up, and if it's negative, the branches of the parabola are directed downwards. Also, this parameter controls the rate of increase of the function from its vertex. So if uh, so the greater is the absolute value of the a perimeter, the more narrow is a graph, and vice versa. The less is this number, the more sloping is a graph. Let's take a look at our picture right here. Obviously, the a parameter for this parabola is uh, greater than the a parameter for this one. And again, obviously, the a parameter for this parab uh, parabola is really close to zero, because it almost degenerates it into the straight line, which, by the way, happens if a equals to zero. Let's see. a equals to zero. And then we have y equals to zero times squared x plus b times x plus c, or b times x plus c, which is an equation of a straight line. Then, there is b, a coefficient which carries no obvious information, but it does influence the parabola's shape and position on the coordinate plane. And finally, there is c, which is also called a free term, uh, which is the parabola's y-intercept, the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. And yet, the parabola might cross the x-axis as well. As a matter of fact, three situations are possible. The parabola might uh, cross the x-axis in two points. The parabola and the x-axis might have one common point. Or the parabola and the x-axis might not intersect, like these two parabolas. To identify which case is yours, you should uh, solve the equation for x. Because uh, the x-coordinate of the intersection point of the parabola and the x-axis might have whichever x-coordinate. But their y coordinates will always be zero. Now, a quadratic equation might have two roots, one root, or no roots. These roots, the roots of this equation, would be the x intercepts of this parabola. And in general, they are found by the following formula plus or minus square root of squares b minus 4 times a times c and d 
divided by two a's. The expression under the square root is called a discriminant. And what's so special about it? The thing is that like any other expression lying under the root of an even power, discriminant uh, can be a negative number, can be a negative number. And it is this particular feature that lets us find out exactly how many roots the equation has. It works like this. If discriminant is a, uh, is a positive number, the equation has two roots. If the discriminant is equal to zero, the equation only has one root. And if discriminant is a negative number, the equation has no real root. So again, if the a quadratic equation, or an equation of a parabola, has two roots, the parabola intersects the x-axis in two points. If uh, the quadratic equation has one root, the parabola and the x-axis have one common point. And finally, no roots, no intersections for the x-axis. Also, every parabola has its vertex, a point where uh, the parabola reaches its minimum, if the branches of the parabola are directed upwards like this, like, like uh, right here or here. Or um, it might reach its minimum if the branches of the parabola are directed downwards, like this one. The coordinates of the uh, vertex are found like this. First goes the x-coordinate. divided by 2 times a and the y coordinate of the vertex is found, is found by substituting the x coordinate of the vertex into the given equation so this is how it goes and now let's consider an example with solve Mohammed's problem this problem first let us determine the coefficients a b and c for this particular case so a equals to negative 1 b equals to 2 and c equals to 8 let's see a equals to negative 1, a negative number, which means that the branches of this parabola are directed downwards. Then we have the free term or the y-intercept. So the parabola crosses the y-axis in the point where the coordinates are 0 and 8. We can also find the coordinates of the vertex of this parabola. According to the formula, we go like this. Or substituting the numbers, negative 2 divided by 2 times negative 1, which yields to 1. And then substituting the x coordinate of the vertex into the given equation, we calculate the y coordinate of the vertex. So we go like this plus 2 times 1 plus 8 or negative 1 plus 2 plus 8 which yields to 9 so the coordinates of the vertex are 1 and 9 Mohammed, that's your answer now let us find the x-intercepts for this parabola if there are any 2 define whether there are any uh, x-intercepts for this parabola, we should first solve this equation for x. And then see what happens. So this is the equation. To understand how many roots it has, we should uh, calculate the discriminant. 
So let's do that. According to the formula, we go squared b minus 4 times a times c, which is squared 2 minus 4 times squared uh, times negative 1 times 8, or 4 plus 32, which yields to 36, which is a positive number. And this means that this equation has two roots, and therefore the parabola has two x-intercepts. Let's find them. The first one goes as follows. Negative b plus the square root from the discriminant, which we have just calculated, and then divided by 2 times a. And substituting the numbers, we have a negative 2 plus square root from 36 divided by 2 times negative 1. divided by negative 2, which yields to negative 2. And the second x-intercept, this time we subtract the square root from the discriminant, negative 2 minus the square root from 36, divided by 2 times negative 1, negative 8 divided by negative 2, which is negative 4. Now, summing up, we have now found four points lying on this parabola, and these are the vertex with the coordinates 1 and 9, the y-intercept with the coordinates 0 and 8, and then there were two x-intercepts with, intercept with the coordinates negative 2 and 0, and sorry, my mistake, and 4 and 0. Let's now graph, let's now mark these points on the coordinate plane and connect them. First comes the vertex, then there is the y-intercept, and then the two x-intercepts. Now we're connecting them carefully. And obtain a nice graph.